Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this customization video, I just want to discuss a uh, storage solution for Atlantic Chase, which I have uh, I have a tutorial for set up here to start playing, but I just want to show you real quick something I came up with to make the task force uh, storage uh, easier. You can see here, this is, a, uh, this is a task force station, and these are task force trajectories. And there are 15 of them in the game. There's five German and uh, and 10 ally different groups that you may have on the board at one time. And so getting these little wooden uh, uh, potato sticks out, they remind me of those, uh, those uh, snack potato sticks are awesomely good. Anyway, uh, they remind me of those. Anyway, um, so getting these in and out and fumbling with them is kind of a nuisance. Um, I do wish, I kind of wish GMT had not done the sticks. I mean, they, they work, but um, uh, that's neither here nor there for this. Um, I think counters would have worked just as fine and shown what it was and been easier to, to manipulate. But they also, if you'll notice, they don't show on all four sides what uh, task force they belong to. Um, it'd be nice if they at least had it on two sides instead of just on one. But all right. Nitpicking aside. Well, no, you can't have a nit for a pet. Just one. Um, so there's two ways. I mean, there's several ways you can store these. Uh, if you're comfortable with baggies, um, when you have a task force out, you always have the only things that are specific to a task force, again, are the station and the, uh, the trajectories. So you could have 15 baggies and have your task force in baggies, and that would work fine. Um, the other option would be, of course, to store them in a GMT tray, uh, which I did uh, originally, and I had all the counters and, and task force uh, wooden bits in, in two GMT trays. And, and that was okay. However, I found that I was, as I started playing, actually playing the game and trying to get things out of the um, GMT trays, it was kind of rough. I got big hands and you know, trying to get these things out of the thing was kind of a nightmare. Uh, I tried, ba you know, I, I tried baggies, and uh, you know, this looks like a, a really horrible as seen on TV video. But you know, trying to get my fingers into the bag to pull out, you know, one of the sticks as I needed it was, it's just not fun. So, I wanted to come up with something that would, I think, work better. And so, to that end, I put my uh, 3D design to use in my 3D printer, and I invented these um, uh, task force. Um, storage storage crates, whatever you want to call them. Um, and they simply hold all 15 of the task force markers along with the station. Um, the station's a little elevated, so it just rests on top. And they do have a lid, so you take them out and then you can put the lid on. And these store in the box. Now the lid is loose, so what I've done is I take them and I've got these plasti bands and I always keep a box of these things on my desk. They're not rubber bands, they're plastic. They stretch pretty much out, but don't stretch back. So so, so they only go as far as, they, they, they're not as elastic, they're not as destructive as, as a rubber band would be. So I'll put a link to those in the description or in the blog post. Um, but I just, I put those in there and around, around there and hold them. So as you can see, I've got, you know, all the different task force are grouped together. The only trouble I'm having with, not with the 3D design, but the um, labels that I made, I made them to wrap around like that. And the goal for that was so that when it's in the box, you can grab the task force you want, you know, white with one blue stripe. Um, and then when it's on your table, the, the tray actually sits down inside of it and then you can see it on the side too. What's, what's happening is, the 3D print is smooth on this side for me, so it sticks very well, but then when it wraps around to this side, it's kind of coming undone. So that's not a function of the container, that's a function of my, my decision to make the marking label. I'm gonna post those as well, so you can download the sheet of 15 labels that I made for each of the task force. Uh, if you want them, if you don't, that's fine too, I mean, obviously. Um, uh, so I designed them also so uh, it would hold, there's 15, so it's five rows of three. And instead of being squares, so each one went into a hole, there's, it's lots of three, so it makes them easier to get in and out as you need them. Uh, and I designed it so that if you only had one in there and it falls over, this is going to happen. It can't go into the, you know, it can't get stuck 
down in the bottom. So when you when you're playing when you're playing around, you can just you know you can have these. You get two players, and you can hand them theirs, and you know you have yours, and you can you know pick them up and put them back where they go, and take them out and put them back on the board. A lot easier than just fumbling around with a baggie or like I said the GMT tray. It did allow me then to also reduce all the components into a single GMT tray with dividers. So all the ships and all the tokens and everything are now in there. And so I just have one tray on the table, which definitely makes it easier for solo because it's a big board and you've also got the, uh, the uh, task force displays, which I'm gonna show you now. The other cool thing about these is, there's two cool things that happened accidentally. I did not take these into account when I designed them. So when you have your task force display, you can just set them right there onto the display, you know, and now you've got them there neatly organized and everything. So there's the, this one only requires a couple, so it's overlapped right now. But so like, here's the British one, a couple of theirs, and the Germans have one task force. So, excuse my remotes. Anyway, so those are there where they can be used. So the other cool thing is, put the camera back down is if you are using a GMT tray, I'm gonna mess up my board here a little bit for the markers. And this was another fluke. I didn't notice until I started trying to see if it would all fit in the box and it does all fit in the box. That's the other cool thing is it does actually all fit in the box. These will fit inside that well of the lid. So this is the lid of the GMT tray, the clear plastic, right? And so this little well is actually fit right in there. So it reduces by a few millimeters the height on the box. So I did find that if you get rid of the insert um, that comes with the uh, in the in the GMT box, it's that you know the standard one that's got a well on the bottom and the in the game art, which is gorgeous but not very functional. Um, so if you get rid of that. Um, you can't fit the board, you can fit the cards, you can fit all the rule books and everything else. Then you put the GMT tray on top and then you can put all 15 of these. There's 20 wells here, so I, I just line them up neatly. And um, uh, you can stick this all in the box, put the lid on. Now, if you just let gravity pull the lid down, it will resist, but it's not resisting because of this, it's resisting because the manuals are so much thicker than their usual ones. Right, so what I found is that if you actually press the lid down, it doesn't actually, the lid will actually just compact the manuals and the lid will actually close. And because these are rubber banded and they're kind of locked in place by this, you can actually store it vertical or flat on your shelf, however you want. So anyway, uh, just wanted to share that because I think it's, obviously I think it's a good solution since I came up with it. Um, the link to the file on Thingiverse is available. It's free of charge if you want it. If you have a 3D printer, it'll be really cheap to print. I printed mine in sets of, oh, it didn't, didn't mess it up too bad here. I printed mine in, uh, um, see my labels are coming off on the side. I have to keep pressing them back. I'm gonna have to tape them or something or we'll cut them off on the sides. So that's a nuisance, but I'll put the labels there and you can cut them off and do whatever you want. Um, I printed mine at uh, a, this is getting technical, a 0 0.40 millimeter uh, layer height. And a smoother layer may may or may not print better. I don't know. I printed five of these at a time and they took about four to five hours to print, which if you're not a 3D printer, sounds like a long time. If you are a 3D printer, you know that's not long at all. Um, they're very durable. Um, I mean, don't step on them. Uh, but they, so I, you know, I printed, I printed one overnight. I printed one first thing the next morning and then I printed another set after that one was done when I was out doing some errands, cutting the grass and stuff. And so when I was done, I had all 15 and then it was just a matter of getting the labels to work and then, which obviously they're not. Um, so if you have a 3D printer, it's a pretty quick print to get these. If you do not have a 3D printer, you can order them. I did a rough check uploading them to Shapeways which is one of the print services that I've used before. And what that does is you upload uh, a model and tell it how many you want, and then you let it pick the color and all that kind of stuff. I picked black, you could try to customize them, but I wanted the contrast of the, the markers, you know, wanting to stand out against a background, not blend with the background. Uh, 
I just did a rough a rough check and it looked like it was about 2250 to print 15 of them. So it's a little less than a dollar, a little over a dollar each. Uh, and that would be plus shipping. And that was for just straight PLA, uh, which is what you'd want if you don't know anything about 3D printing, you just order, order them PLA printed. Uh, and I've had good experience with that. And usually what you do is you pick somebody, it'll show you all the people that are open to printing them for you and who's closest to you, so on and so forth. So you can get them pretty quick. Um, but that's it really. I mean, it, it just, it's, to me, it's very helpful. I know some of you guys may, uh, or gals may prefer the, uh, you know, just baggies or, uh, the GMT tray or some other solution. But, uh, for me, uh, I like to be organized on the play and ease of play and easy, easy, easy to find counters and easy to get to them and easy to, easy to use them, especially with, you know, like I said, big hands. So that is this update. It probably went on a little longer than I intended, but I hope you find it informative. Again, I will put all the links down below. Hey, uh, I know every channel asks this, and if you do it with every channel, it's meaningless. If everybody's special, nobody's special. But if you could like, subscribe, some of you may or may not know I cannot post on BGG. So if you would share it uh, there or on other uh, sites, if you think people would find it interesting, that would help me quite a bit. And I appreciate you watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!